If there is one aspect of my life that I truly adored, it was my job. It gave me a chance to travel a lot and stay in some of the most luxurious places. My boss always brought me along during her business trip since I served as her assistant. In September 2002, she asked me to organize a trip to St. Louis, and I found a nice hotel for both of us. Lemp Mansion, it was called, and the restaurant was really classy. It was the perfect spot for us to stay as my boss attended business meetings. When we arrived, everything seemed normal, and I loved my room. It was really comfy. My boss took the room next door, and she checked on me from time to time. After her business meeting, I left her at the dining area chatting with some friends. And since I was so tired, I decided to go to bed early. When she was done with her friends, she passed by my room to say goodnight since we were really close. And that night turned out to be one of the worst of my entire life. I didn't sleep. I kept on hearing someone knock at the door, but every time I checked it, there was nobody there. I heard whispers from the next room that my boss was occupying, so I decided to check on her. Instead of being in bed, she was in a corner talking to herself. She kept on saying, go away, very loudly. And I suddenly realized she was not addressing me. She later explained that she was seeing a woman covered in blood who was asking her to save her. I was so confused at first, but Later, I heard rumors that the hotel was haunted by spirits of a family that had died there. As soon as we changed hotels, these strange things stopped happening and both of us were at peace. My parents decided to sell our ranch and move to a cheaper city since we were going through a financial crisis. Moving was hard for all of us, but particularly me since it meant leaving behind all of my friends from school. Finding new friends in a totally new place seemed like quite a challenge, and I wasn't very social, so it made it quite challenging. A part of me hated my parents for doing this to me, and I was just too young to understand why we had to move. My dad kept on explaining that he made the decision, and he'd already paid for a small house in New Jersey. While unpacking in the new house, it was a bit challenging since we had a lot of stuff and not a lot of space. It took us a few hours and we finally went to bed. All I wanted was some time to process it all. I'm not a very deep sleeper and I often find myself hearing everything around me, even when it's quiet. That night as I slept, I felt a cold hand touch my feet. I usually don't cover my feet at night. And the cold hand felt so real. I started screaming and the next thing I remember is both of my parents in my room trying to calm me down. They assumed that I was dreaming, so they went back to sleep. Given the circumstances, there's no way I was sleeping anymore, and I decided to go downstairs and watch a movie, and my parents went back to bed. I chose a comedy that might cheer me up and maybe help me forget what I had experienced. As I watched the movie, it suddenly stopped, and the TV switched to normal programming on its own. I was so shocked that I ran to my parents' bedroom. This time they told me to stop throwing tantrums and go back to bed. I decided to sleep next to my big sister. At 1 a.m., I heard a scream from my parents' bedroom. Both of them were terrified since they also felt cold hands touch their feet. We spent the rest of the evening at a church nearby. I've been living in Louisiana for a few years now, and I really like its peaceful surroundings. I'm also the kind that likes exploring, and I usually took different routes during my running sessions. This not only made my exercises fun, but it also helped me explore different regions of the city. One Monday morning, I woke up early enough for my run, and I was ready to explore a region not very far away from my house. The place wasn't very populated especially during such times, and had this beautiful plantation. To keep myself busy and motivated, I always ran while listening to music from my phone. As I ran past the plantation, I suddenly saw something that made me numb. There was a strange woman that was wandering around. Though she had a turban, I could tell that one of her ears was bleeding. 
I made a few steps closer to the plantation and the woman suddenly disappeared. I was so terrified that I couldn't catch my breath. When I calmed down, I took off as fast as I could and went straight home. When I told my roommate, she didn't believe me. I decided to take her there the next day so that she could see it with her own eyes. And when we got there, the same woman with the turban showed up. She was wearing the same clothes and one of her ears was still bleeding. When we moved closer to the plantation, she disappeared. My friend was so shocked that she fainted. We later found out that this woman was not actually real, but a ghost said to haunt the plantation. I was working in a hospital as a nurse when something strange happened to one of the patients under my care. Before this incident, I never believed in paranormal activities. I took care of a charming old lady suffering from tuberculosis. She was not doing so well, so I had to monitor her closely. The old lady was very friendly, and every time we chatted, she reminded me of my grandmother due to her kindness. She wasn't afraid to die, and kept on telling me that she was at peace with it. As I was changing her sheets, the patient, seated in a wheelchair, started saying, I can't wait to meet you in person, little Mercy. Though I heard her clearly, I could not understand her since I was not Mercy and there was nobody else in the room. When I asked the lady who she was talking to, she pointed upward, and I couldn't see anything. I assumed she was losing it and forgot all about it. A few days later, I found the lady talking to herself again. She explained that little Mercy had been visiting her for weeks. I freaked out a little bit and told her that it wasn't real. The day that the old lady took her last breath made me believe in the paranormal activities. She died in my arms, and as soon as I realized she was no more, I saw a shadow of a small girl walking across the room, and then a whisper saying, she's finally home. I was so terrified that I couldn't focus for almost a month. I'd just gotten a new job in a certain hotel in a nearby town. Since I had some experience in this line of work, I really didn't struggle to transition into the new work environment. I preferred working night shifts since it was less busy, so I spent a lot of nights at work. One night, two of my colleagues came running into the kitchen claiming that there was a baby crying in the storeroom. I thought they were joking until I heard it myself. We looked for this baby for an hour, turning almost everything upside down, but we couldn't find any baby. The sounds continued to become louder, and focusing on work was almost impossible. When we started digging deeper, we found out that the hotel's previous owner had killed her own child in that storeroom. This child's spirit was not at peace, and it haunted us for a long time until I was forced to quit.